one one goal. So Byron and I are both members of what we call the Dolphins Social Impact Committee, and we we just started meeting over Zoom, just just how we're meeting now. And guys started talking about what they're interested in, and we kind of came up with three things, three common ideas that people wanted to work on, and it was education, economic empowerment, and civic engagement. And obviously, you know, elections coming up uh, this year, and so civic engagement kind of came to the front and we said, hey, we want to do something, we want to have a positive impact and, you know, raising awareness and talking about things is awesome, but we wanted to take action. And then, you know, we also wanted to educate people. And so we thought, you know, having productive conversations with people that have spent their careers working in these areas is a great way to, you know, spread, spread awareness, have, you know, have great conversations and learn more. And then we're going to turn that into action. So why, why do you guys think voting is such a important thing for citizens to partake in? What, what do you say to the skeptic that says, Hey, I vote or I don't vote, but you know, my elected officials don't, you know, they don't represent me. What do you say to the, the skeptics of, of voting in general? You, you want me to go first, Professor Smith, or? Absolutely. Okay. So let me tell you, first of all, you know, some of the times, you know, I might hear, oh, my vote don't count. It doesn't know. Or why even bother voting? And one of the things that, that, that I tell folks right off the bat, that if your vote didn't matter, there wouldn't be so many people putting in so much resources into stopping you from voting. So obviously, there is some value in the vote. And I speak about the importance of voting, and this gets me a little hype, so excuse me, moving around, right? But when we look at, for instance, you know, if, if I'm the mayor of Miami or Dade County, right, and I look at, at Liberty City, right, and I compare it to, say, Pinecrest, which is a more affluent area, right, that actually dictates a lot of things, right? So when I look at Liberty City, right, the first thing I see is that there's a lot of people in Liberty City who can't vote because of a uh, felony conviction. And that's because of the over-policing that we see in like, say, the Liberty Cities or the overtowns, right? But you don't see that in that type of policing in, say, Pinecrest. Now, this is what happens, right? At the end of the day, right, as a politician, the number one job is to get reelected. And so they're going to be steered towards by who are voting or what those people look like and what they want. Well, as a politician, when I look at in Liberty City and see that you know, a third of the people can't vote because of a felony conviction. And then after the remaining folks, maybe 10% show up to vote. In my head, in the back of the head somewhere, it's like, well, those people, they can't put me in office, nor can they take me out. So why should I care about their kids dying and getting gunned down in the street? Why should I care about aggressive police tactics? Why should I care about the quality of education? Why should I care about the quality of their roads, right? But now you let, a puppy get run over in Pinecrest, you best believe the mayor have a press conference that same day, right? And that's because when they look at Pinecrest, they see that a majority of people can vote and they have the resources to actually contribute to that politician's campaign. So unfortunately, even if I was uh, Malcolm X reincarnated as a politician, I can't afford to care about what's going on in Liberty City as much as I care about what's going on in Pinecrest. But when you talk about restoring the right to vote, the people with felony convictions and reinvigorating a conversation about civic engagement, right? Which, just to give you just a brief history, back in the civil rights era, back during a season time, right? When dad went to go vote, everybody got up and went to go vote. Everybody got dressed up and went to go vote. And voting was a family discussion at the dinner table. However, when you cut the head off a snake, the body dies. So when you strip mom of the right to vote and dad of the right to vote, you kill a conversation about civic engagement, right? And so you have this, uh, 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 these factors that are contributing to the low turnout. When our communities are empowered to be able to register to vote and take that power and not let it remain dormant and actually operationalize that power by voting, then we can change the conditions uh, that we are facing in our communities. We have the power to do so. We've shown it in different places throughout the country. We've shown it here in the state of Florida, and we can do much more. Three other quick things uh, that I want to point out to add on to 
the uh, statements by Desmond. There are three misconceptions that people have also. There are some people who do not register and vote because they believe that registering to vote will require them to, to uh, serve on jury duty. That used to be the law, as Desmond would say, back in Professor H.T. Smith's day. <laughs> now, if you have a driver's license, you can be called a jury duty. Voting, registering to vote has nothing to do with jury service. That's number one. Number two, my vote doesn't count. Desmond said it. The 2000 presidential election was decided by 527 votes in the state of Florida. Trust me, your vote makes a difference. Third, the people that say, I, I'm not in politics, I, I'm, so I don't vote. You might not be in politics, but politics is in you. <laughs> politics is in everything that's important in your life. Politicians decide how much taxes you pay for everything you buy. Politicians decide on Pell Grants and monies that people can use to go to school. Politicians and politics de determine how you can, how and much and what you can pass down that you've earned to your children. So yep. you're in politics. It's, it's like if a guy start punching you and you say, I'm not in a fight. Yes, you are. If a guy's punching you, you're in a fight. No, no I'm not fighting. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm a peace guy. I'm not a fight. You in a fight. Yep. So everybody that's alive in the state of Florida today is in politics. The question is whether you're gonna have some say so in how politics treats you, how if, you're represented, how if, your, your issues are being addressed. So if, I wanna make sure that's, that's it. And I think another big component is this, um, you know, it's not, it's not good enough just to be, you know, your average citizen who does right. I think in a democracy, it's your responsibility as a citizen to vote. To, to understand the issues in your community, to understand the issues in the country. This is how you make a better uh, a democracy. This is how you vote people who represent you. And I was a person who didn't vote uh, four years ago because I felt that way. I was like, oh, I'm good, man. I do, I do things right. You know, I stay out of trouble. Um, but, but now I'm starting to realize that's not good enough. W what you need to do is take responsibility and use your vote and use your voice to really enact change. You can't complain and, and be frustrated by something but not do anything. This is your chance to do something. So take the responsibility, learn, educate yourself, and vote.